The federal government says Boko Haram insurgents and their ASWAP allies have changed their strategy, targeting Christians and Christian villages to trigger a religious war and throw the nation into chaos. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, raised the alarm at a media briefing on Thursday in Abuja. The minister noted that the insurgents who del deluded themselves as Muslims were nothing more than bloodthirsty, rapacious killers who subscribed to no religion. He stressed that they were deliberately targeting Christians to sow the seed of confusion between the two religions. Mohammed said that some had misinterpreted the attacks to insinuate a systematic campaign to persecute Christians in the country. Mohammed stressed that the renewed vigor by the military in their war against insurgents was paying off, judging by the victories they recorded in recent times. And joining us in the studio this evening to discuss this further is journalist Dipo Olayoku. Thank you, Dipo, for staying with us. Now, what comes to your mind when you hear this kind of report coming from the, the federal government? Yes, there's a need for us to situate within the context of uh, what is happening. Okay. And uh, this is the fear that some of us raised when this thing appears to be <clears throat> like a religious dichotomist of Christian Muslim. And we remember that about six, seven years ago, this antics was deployed by the Boko Haram guys when they were bombing churches. Yes. And then it became a fashion that anywhere you see a church, you will see security men around and stuff like that. When that one didn't pay off, I think the system, the antics died down. But don't forget that now we have a collaboration between ISIS, oh sorry, Boko Haram, and what they call Islamic State of Western okay, okay, Province. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you look at the history of this ISWAP, they took their they had their root in ISIS, ISIL, Quis seem to be promoting what they call Islamic interest. And that is their style, that is their antics. When they enter into a place, they create a division. But the question we should be asking ourselves is, must we fall as a country fall into this trap? Because these guys already want to start what we can call a religious war. Yes. And come to think of it, if you look at their style, how, their lifestyle, are these guys really Muslims? All over the world, anywhere their camp is attacked and they are made to flee, so to speak. No, People don't no. find Qurans there. Yes. What you find are what condoms in, uh, in their hemp. All those uh, what we call tramadol and all those uh, hard drugs. So nothing in their life to show that actually they profess a religion, even in their lifestyle. Lifestyle, yes. Because we have listened to a lot of Islamic leaders that this their lifestyle is not what their Quran has is teaching them, abducting women, turning them into sex slaves. Turning some of them into house court, like uh, slaves generally doing house court or church house for them. So I, I think what the government needs to do is to present a picture before Nigerians that these guys are not fighting any religious war. These guys just want to sow the seed of discord, and Nigerians should not buy into it. Okay. Now mm -hmm. let's talk on um, information dissemination and management here. Do doesn't this kind of message send um, a wrong signal, like panic, to us, the citizens, and also to international communities, saying there might be a likelihood of, of, of a war in a country? No, that has been the narrative for a very long time. You see uh, Khan calling on for what they call uh, March, some call it protest. That was towards, uh, towards the end of uh, January. And then just like yesterday, the Catholic uh, bishops also, b because these guys have been able to create a scenario of Christians attacking Muslims. And I, I, to me, I think the government was slow in coming out to dispel the thing. The narrative has spread. You can remember, you see, from the, some um, legislature, congressmen from America yes. expressing that fear, that view. You even Donald Trump at one time or the other was trying to say the president should try to produce, to protect those who hold contrary religious views. This narrative is out there in the field, but I think it's coming rather too late for the president, for the federal government to actually speak on it. But if you look very well, you know that this is the anti that they have been propagated by these people, and it is now left to Nigerians not to key into it. Okay. Now, now going by the saying of the federal government that they've, um, they are aware of some of these tactics and strategies being employed by um, this Boko Haram insurgent and ISWAP, then why is it so hard then for our military to, to put an end to this insurgency? <laughs> insurgency is not the conventional war, where you know your 
opponent, where your opponent will abide by the rule. You know there's something called rule of engagement in war, war yes. prosecution. Your opponents are not observing this. They lay ambush for you, they attack villages, and you should get to the north. Some of these villages are far flung. I remember in 2019, sometimes in January, we were moving within Bauchi State. Then we traveled for about one hour, 45 minutes, inside, apart from, away from the main road, to go into communities. And I remember my colleague was telling me that, he said, General, do you think if anything happens in this place now, our law enforcement agencies will be able to get there? And what is the strength of our army? By now, the Nigerian army, except we are deceiving ourselves, they are stretched beyond limit. Uh, if you come across these guys when they tell you what they go through, what is the strength of Nigerian army? I don't think we are up to 200 or 300 Nigerian police. They are up to just 300 to police the whole of Nigeria. There is no state in Nigeria, I think that are two states of the Federation, where you have the Nigerian army or military involved in local security internally. So you notice that our guys are overstressed. That's why I think one, um, one I think it was the chief of army staff that was saying that they will need about 100,000 youth to join the army before they can come. So Nigeria is fighting a serious war. Right. Don't forget we have foreign interests there. Yes. That uh, we have France, we have Turkey, we have Iran that are aiding some of these guys. It's a big war that we are fighting. Okay. Now, now would you say um, the war against Boko Haram, look at, in terms of information management, do you think that the federal government has been able to handle this well? Do you think they've handled no, no, it no, well? No, 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 no. The yeah. information aspect of it has been below par, yeah. I must confess, because the government is not quick into educating or letting Nigerians know what is happening. I remember during the Gulf War, you have a situation where the government was briefing the America regularly. Even those of us that are not even were not anywhere in America, you were watching but mediums like and people they were telling us what was happening. I think the government need to rejig its information department seriously. It's a pity that the minister is just uh, waking up now, but uh, but I think there's the need for them to rejig because it, when there are no information available, some people are feeling the gap. And unfortunately, with the, social, with the menace of uh, social media now, a lot of misinformation is out there. And that is why the government needs to be up and doing. There should be a system of at least, yes, we understand that in security matters, not everything is being there, it has to be divulged. But there are some information that Nigerians need to relate their fears so that when anything happens, Nigeria will get to know. It is not that coming too late for the government to be talking about uh, Boko Haram antics. Some of us knew it, but a lot of Nigerians have keyed into it that, oh, they are killing Christians. They are killing Christians because they want to annihilate Christians. They want to fulanize and a lot of, and that narrative has spread. Yes. A lot of people have keyed into it. Maybe we'll get it out of our minds. Right. Government will have to continue. Thank you very much, Dipo Layoku. Thank you for staying with us on so, News on the Hour and for your contribution. It's always a pleasure.